Hello and good morning once again. We are studying Lesson 12, Sunday's Lesson, and it is entitled, An Unfailing Virtue. So from the me memory text, we discover what that unfailing virtue is. It reads, Charity never faileth. So from this verse, we find that this whole lesson this week is going to be based on agape love, because charity in the original uh, Greek is the word agape, which is that divine selfless love that it never fails. So the foundation of the lesson this week is about that divine agape love, that can never fail. It is the strongest power, the strongest motivator, the strongest transformative power that there is in the universe. And because of that, let's read what our um, commentary says. Never should we pass by one suffering soul without seeking to impart to him of the comfort wherewith we are comforted with God. That's what agape love does. It, it flows. If we receive it, it flows to others. So the first section is called a powerful motivation. And of course, that motivation has to be that agape, that divine love, that selfless love. And so as Christian stewards, what was Paul's motivation? As he wrote to the Corinthian church, we see that Paul was compelled. The gospel is good news. And he said in 1 Corinthians 9, 16 to 19, he says that he preaches the gospel, the good news. He shares the good news, not for glory, not for attention, not for applause, but he's compelled to do it because how can I not share? He says, and woe is me. And he does it willingly. He does it with energy and intentionality and and automatically because something has motivated him and if we go to second corinthians 5 14 and 15 we see what that motivation is and so here he speaks again to the corinthian church in his second letter the love of christ is what constrains us because he died for all and he died for all that all should live and not not live unto themselves but live as he lives and so this is what makes him so preoccupied so obsessive is because he has tasted the love of Christ and this is such good news to humanity with all our dysfunctionalities this is Paul discovers the answer the cure because we are doomed we were doomed and Jesus came and lived and died for us. And so now Paul, he has tasted and he has received this gift and he has experienced that agape love and in gratitude and with reference to all of that God has done, he now allows that agape to flow to others. And so what does Peter, another apostle, have to say about what motivated him. So we turn to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 22, and we see that he says, Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. Why? Why does he exhort us to have this pure, unfeigned love and obedience to God and service to others? Because we've been born again, not of corruptible seed, but of the incorruptible by the word of God, as a result of having received that life and re uh, that death, life and resurrection of Jesus Christ that he has hammered out for us a new life. He has taken on our DNA so that he can share his divine nature with us. And this is what motivated the early church. This is what infected the um, apostles the disciples and the whole early church and there was an explosion of the gospel the good news through the whole roman empire and it changed the world and they were accused of turning the world upside down and so as we look in our um, commentary beneath question one we see that jesus christ is our example 
He went about doing good. He lived to bless others. Love beautified and nobled all of his actions. We are not commanded to do to ourselves what we wish others to do to us. We are to do to others what we wish them to do to us in the same circumstances. So this, there's no love of influence. There's no desire for the esteem or the applause. Um, sometimes people do good things for applause, for recognition, for self-respect. But the gospel, the agape, in seeing the agape love of God towards humanity, towards this dark planet, this is our source of motivation. This is our, the most powerful tool, the most powerful healing mechanism, the most powerful motivation that there is in the universe. God's love for us and then our love response that he gives us. It all comes from him. So the only way we can actually not be healed is to intentionally refuse his healing love. So it is my prayer that we will also receive his agape love and allow it to flow through us and to have that same motivation. May it be our prayer to, to choose um, to, to be purged, to be cleansed from all of our natural, selfish, and proud, prideful tendencies. And so um, I pray that we'll be blessed this week as we study the unfailing virtue of agape love. God bless you today.